Hi, uh, so with this uh, lecture, we're going to start a new topic of uh, steady current, which, as you probably uh, know, will involve the discussion of Ohm's law in a conductor eventually. But uh, for this lecture, I'm going to uh, sit on the more fundamental uh, definition of the current density and, and uh, some of the more uh, basic concept. Um, so first of all, uh, current density from the uh, theoretical point of view is more fundamental than the current. So current density is like a, is an example of a vector field defined at every point in space and time. And the, what we normally call the current is defined in relation to the current density. So um, define, uh, given a, a, any, any open surface like this, uh, there's a normal, uh, normal surface vector at every point on the surface. And let me call that as ds. And also at the same point, one can define the current density vector. And then you take the inner product of the two vectors then integrate this thing over the entire area of the open surface and that gives you the current that passes through the open surface. So that's how you uh, end up deriving the amount of current by integrating the current density over this uh, uh, surface. Okay, so the charge conservation, which must hold uh, in any uh, physical system, implies that there be this uh, continuity equation. And I think we uh, discussed this uh, quite some time ago. And um, since in this chapter, we're only going to be thinking about the steady state, so there's no time dependence in uh, any of the physical quantities. So the first term vanishes, and therefore this uh, current density vector always has to be divergence-free, like this. Okay, so this is a relation that would be uh, highly useful to keep in mind, at least for steady state. Okay, so in the remainder of today's lecture, we're going to walk you through, I'm going to walk you through this uh, concept of current density and all that by solving a, an explicit example. Um, it's actually, uh, actually turns out to be a quite sophisticated example and has a real life application. Uh, it's something called a vacuum diode or uh, more simply put a vacuum tube. And uh, the structure of this vacuum tube is, is uh, actually a pair of metallic plates that are connected to some uh, external voltage source, which creates a potential difference between the two plates. So one plate located at x equal to zero has a zero potential. The other plate located at x equal to L has the potential V. And so electrons have the negative charge, so electrons will flow from the low potential plate to the high potential plate like this. And, and, and at first, the naive thinking would be that this is a vacuum region, so uh, therefore the potential would have to satisfy the Laplace equation. Uh, and uh, in this context, because this is the only one-dimensional flow, uh, the Laplace equation simply means that the second derivative of the potential function be zero. And uh, if some function whose second derivative is uh, zero, uh, then that function is a linear function. And keeping track of the boundary conditions, namely that uh, this linear functions be uh, 
uh, have a zero value here and a value equal to v over there, immediately fixes the potential to be this particular linear function of the position x. Okay, so uh, so now the current uh, per electron is uh, is simply the electric charge divided by the time that it takes to uh, flow from one plate to the other. Well, that's just the average velocity of the electron divided by the length, L. And that uh, pretty much completes the picture of what goes on as the electron starts out from one plate and ends up on the other plate. Okay, so that's a, that's a kind of high school picture of what goes on, or maybe the freshman in college picture of what goes on when uh, you have a pair of metallic plates uh, at uh, different potentials. But uh, now for the fun of it, and also because this is a pretty important engineering problem, uh, we're going to solve it uh, with much more sophistication. And the sophistication comes from the fact that when you have a, a pretty dense flow of electrons, okay, so here I treated the, I, I drew the picture as if you have just a, a small number of electron particles uh, passing through some sort of vacuum region. Uh, but in reality, what happens is like, uh, these electrons flow more like uh, more like as if this was uh, some kind of fluid or liquid. Okay, so it kind of forms a, a cloud of electrons that starts out and and kind of spreads out and permeate the entire space between the uh, between the two plates. Okay. So this is this is a, a electron fluid picture of what's going on when you have these two uh, plates at different potentials. Um, but then that also implies that this region uh, is no longer a charge-free vacuum. This region is actually filled with uh, a certain amount of electrons as represented by the density, uh, electron density uh, function rho. Okay, so rather than uh, imposing the Laplace equation in this region, in this uh, space region, we just might have to impose the Poisson equation. Okay, so the second derivative of the potential equal equals uh, minus the charge density. Uh, that seems to be the more realistic picture of what's going on in this, in this particular device. Um, there are a couple of other things one has to keep in mind, uh, namely the, namely the, the density, uh, current density, which is given by the product of the charge density and the uh, velocity, and rather the speed, uh, and both the density and the and the velocity are now functions of the coordinate x. Um, however, uh, go back to this uh, steady state condition that the divergence of the current density vector be zero. Um, well, in this case, this is only a one-dimensional problem. So uh, now the derivative of the current density uh, has to be zero in a steady state. Okay. So what that means is that this, uh, this current density is not a function of the position. It's a constant. which means that as this uh, electron density varies from location to location, uh, 
there is a compensating change in the velocity from location to location in such a way that their product remains a constant throughout the entire space. Um, okay, so that's a strong constraint on the kind of uh, density profile and the velocity profile you can possibly have in this uh, physical system. And, and furthermore, there is the energy conservation, which uh, dictates that if an electron starts out from this uh, low potential plate uh, with the zero velocity, and then begins to gradually accelerate due to the potential difference or the electric field, then it's in uh, then it's uh, kinetic energy one half mv square is coming entirely from the uh, electrostatic potential energy, which is uh, electron charge multiplied by the potential at that location. Okay. So solving this in terms of V will give you this uh, expression of the velocity as a function of the local potential value like this. Okay, so now as I said earlier, this uh, current density is a constant. So that means I can express the local density as uh, inverse of the local velocity, but local velocity is expressed in terms of the local potential through this relation. So now we have the expression of the local density as a function of the local potential. But remember where, where this uh, electron density function had an appearance? Well, that was precisely in the Poisson equation. So now we have the uh, we have obtained this uh, relation, uh, and interestingly enough, this this relation is written entirely in terms of the potential function phi. Okay, so this is some sort of second order differential equation. And uh, solving this uh, differential equation looks pretty doable. So I'm going to just uh, walk you through the, the steps of the solution. Uh, so what I'm telling you is a sketch of how you solve it. So the second derivative of this uh, function is proportional to the function to the minus one half power. But if I multiply both sides by the first derivative, uh, then uh, uh, and a quick inspection shows that this uh, original equation of motion can be rewritten as the space derivative of a phi prime square. Phi prime is the first derivative of the potential function. So phi prime square. Uh, space derivative of phi prime square is proportional to the space derivative of a root phi. Okay. So now you can take out this uh, derivative from both sides and obtain the relation that the uh, first derivative of the potential squared is proportional to the square root of the potential or uh, taking away the square, you find that the first derivative of the potential is proportional to one fourth power of the potential. Okay, so this thing can be integrated out uh, one more time like this. And you will find that uh, the result of the integration gives you something that reads, uh, L, the length of the separation between the two charge plates, be proportional to a three quarter power of the potential difference. Okay, so as I said, this is only a sketch of the derivation. Uh, and 
while making a sketch, I, I forgot to keep track of uh, the factor of the uh, current density. And, and remember, this current density was, uh, was a constant and not dependent on, t on the position. And when you follow through this derivation while keeping track of that uh, constant properly, you'll discover that this uh, current density uh, is related to the potential difference and the length through this equation. So obviously I skipped a lot of intermediate details. Uh, uh, it's partly intentional because for me to go through all those uh, details while you guys are just out there watching me, that's not very educational. So I want you to fill in those steps and, and really complete these uh, derivations and prove to me that this relation does indeed hold. And, and this is a pretty important relation, actually, because uh, J0 is basically the current that flows from one plate to the other. And on the other side of the equation, you have the, uh, you have the potential to 3 half power. But uh, you divide the current by the voltage, and um, and uh, that should be the inverse of the resistance. But now what you discover is that the resistance is not a constant. The resistance is actually more like uh, uh, inverse square root of the voltage. Okay. So this is an example of uh, what's known as the non-ohmic transport, that the, uh, the amount of current that flows from one point to the other is not strictly proportional to the voltage difference between the two points. Uh, it depends on the voltage to some power other than one. And that's, uh, that's the situation with the non-ohmic transport of electronic current and um, actually this is uh, this simple device uh, shown here or rather shown here uh, actually it creates a nice experimental uh, test case of how to realize the non-ohmic transport and ultimately it's this uh, non-ohmic character which makes this device useful as an electronic device, as you probably, some of you probably know from studying uh, electronics.